G'day guys, it's Ben here again, here to bring you another video. This one is going to be introducing my chickens um, playlist. And in this video, we're gonna look at the considerations you need to go through prior to getting chickens. So I don't wanna make this uh, super complicated, but you do need to think about some stuff prior to getting chickens. And let's go through the list. So I've got them written down. We'll go. Right, so the first question we're gonna go through really is why keep chickens in the first place? And uh, for me, when I first started to think about chickens, I was like, oh, you know, it's, it's really a farmer's thing. It's really, uh, you know, not what uh, sort of everyday ordinary people do. And I had a, a, a jo um, job and my missus had a, uh, a job as well. So we didn't really have a whole lot of time at home. And it just didn't sort of strike me as being um, the kind of thing that I was that interested in at the time. However, when we um, got a bit further into it, and I started to realize that there's so much the chickens can bring to your garden. They're fantastic for controlling pests. They um, produce fantastic manure. They'll dig up the ground and, and scratch around and they'll help you out. And uh, in return for a little bit of effort on your part, they'll provide you with eggs on a very routine basis. And they can keep producing eggs for like seven or eight years in some cases. And I've even known of chickens that can keep producing eggs way into um, the sort of eight, nine, ten years old sort of mark. So uh, obviously that's uh, going to depend on your breed and what you feed them and all that kind of stuff. But you need to uh, to have a good reason as to why you're keeping chickens because sometimes it can get a bit frustrating. But um, you start off with, a, with, with some good chickens and a good place for them to live and provide them with a decent diet, then uh, the chickens are going to provide you with um, quite a good sort of quality eggs and they'll, they'll do lots for you in terms of your garden as well. So for me, that's the big reason as to why I'm, I've got chickens as, as well. So there's always the pros and cons. There is that little bit of uh, looking after you've got to do pretty much every day. And sometimes um, I reckon roughly every sort of three months or so, you've got to clean out the coop. And um, I move my coop around, or I will be moving my coop around. Um, on top of that, um, you've got the investment and the time it takes to go and get feed and you've got to uh, change out the water and all that kind of stuff. But there are ways we can um, use which are going to minimize the effect of that on us but um, there are some things that we've got to think about and obviously the big initial um, outlay can be a bit of a, a factor for people so if you're like me um, and you want to get a bit involved in some DIY you can alleviate a lot of those costs and produce really great uh, surroundings for them to live in um, and provide them from, with a, with a, a really good, great environment. Obviously as well, uh, one of the bigger cons is it does restrict on your ability to go away sometimes. But if you live in the suburbs, like I think most people do in Australia, it's not that hard to find someone who can, for a few dollars a day, they can um, help look after your chickens and collect the eggs, that kind of thing. But uh, otherwise, I think chickens are a great pet to have. Okay, so getting um, pretty serious on the list, we've got to think about predators. So predators come into uh, to the environment where the chickens are living. And um, in Australia, we've obviously got things like feral and domesticated dogs and cats, which are probably the biggest ones. Um, also things like eagles, magpies, crows, um, occasionally you need to worry about things like uh, the hawks and stuff like that and obviously snakes. Snakes I believe are far more prevalent around uh, the suburbs than they are in the bush believe it or not and uh, for those people that um, do any sort of maintenance or anything in high-rise towers you'll know what I mean. Uh, there's definitely a, a lot of snakes in these kind of areas and uh, my neighbour actually just the other day pulled out a snake skin so uh, something to bear in mind. And so when you're constructing your keep, that's that's definitely something you've got to have in mind. You can't just let your chickens roam around all day and, and free range them. I know a lot of people love the idea of free ranging, but um, it's, it's just not that simple. And um, if you do free range, you've also got to understand you're introducing a lot of risk factors as well. Uh, and obviously things like mice and rats are a bigger problem, not so much the chickens themselves, but into, um, into the eggs. So again, when you're free ranging, you want to make sure that uh, you're collecting any eggs that they lay throughout the day. Okay, local laws. Local laws are a big one. Um, you'll find some councils really don't care that much as to what chickens you have, and other councils are far more 
um, restrictive. I live in Brisbane and the uh, for a plot size or a, uh, the size of your grounds uh, if it's less than 800 meters you can only have six chickens and they must be female you can't have uh, any roosters at all if you've got above 800 meters then you can go to 40 chickens um, I believe it's either 20 or 40 I'm not sure you'll need to check but uh, and laws do change so it's, it's really important to know what your restrictions are and if you do decide to move house then you've also got to check if um, if you're going into a different council's area what are the laws there can I take my chickens with me or do I need to um, to get rid of them and buy new chickens all these kind of laws come into it um, generally speaking however if you go within the RSPCA guidelines you'll cover off on, on pretty much most things and it's not too hard just to phone up the council and say look um, what are the restrictions on poultry in, in these kind of areas Righto, roosters. Most councils are going to um, not allow you to keep roosters. They simply make too much noise and people zero in on them. Um, we all know that uh, the dogs make a lot of noise night and day, but um, councils don't tend to get too excited about that. For some reason, they seem to zero in on, on roosters. All right, space. So this is where the RSPCA guidelines come in. And um, what we need to know is is how much, uh, yeah, this is a, a, a little bit more complicated than you might first think. So there's roosting space. So that is the the amount of space that a chicken needs basically at night time. Um, and depending on where you look, you'll find very, very different guidelines. Um, but check with the RSPCA because they're actually a governing body within Australia and also um, your local laws and that'll, that'll decide that for you. Plus, there's also the space that a chicken needs within a run uh, during the daytime. So you've got roosting space, which is really at nighttime, and the run space, which is sort of during the daytime. And that's going to uh, indicate sort of how much feed they have in terms of natural grass, that kind of thing. So important to know. Uh, your type of perches, uh, pretty simple. Chickens don't like um, those really sort of narrow perches that you might find in a budgerigar cage. Chickens prefer um, flat and fairly large perches. So the way to get around that, I believe, is um, you go to somewhere like Bunnings or a larger hardware store and you'll find um, non-structural pine, which is 30 by 70 mil, I think. It only costs a few dollars, like three, four dollars for a 2.4 meter lens, which is absolutely plenty for, um, for a coop. And then if you want to, uh, construct some uh, little perches to put around the garden, you can do that as well. Um, chickens love to roost, so it's important to have some good roosts for them and some good perches. Okay, flooring. Uh, flooring's an important one. Um, you need a flooring that is going to uh, allow you to, get, to, to keep it clean, basically. So if you use wooden flooring, my experience, not so great. And um, you can put down lino tiles and you can pick it up really cheaply, especially from like house renovations. Uh, and then you put down on top of that something like pine shavings. Pine shavings have a natural antibiotic, uh, correction, uh, antibacterial uh, property to them. But you can also use um, things like layer pads and I'll get that into that in a bit of a, uh, another video. All right, so the number of eggs that you desire across a day or a week is going to indicate the number of chickens. Most chickens will lay one egg per day roughly. Um, so not necessarily always. And if you've got a family uh, with a lot of you know, older kids or some teenagers, you might want to think about sort of having more chickens so you can get those, uh, those eggs to give you the protein. The species of chicken. So some chickens are far more robust and some chickens have um, are very sort of decorative and so on. So do your research on this and um, and have a good look around and see if you can find a good breeder. It's worth going to some of the bigger sort of ag agricultural shows and have a good look at what uh, what's available. And they'll um, you can get some really good advice from the breeders. It doesn't necessarily cost you anything, and you don't need to commit to anything. But getting the right chicken for you is really important. Okay, so using the above information, we now sort of work out the size of the coop we need and the size of the run. And this is going to start shaping the design of the, uh, the whole sort of chicken area that we have. Um, so if you only have four chickens, you would obviously get away with a much smaller space than if you had eight or 12 or whatever it might be. 
and um, and you also need to know what sort of size area the, the, the chicken, what sort of footprint the chicken's going to uh, coop is going to cover. Um, and obviously, if you have a mobile chicken coop, so if you can get yours onto wheels or something like that, then um, you may not require such a big footprint because you can keep the chickens on new grass every day or, or move it around every week, whatever it might be. It depends on how big it is and what it's made from. Um, there we go. So your site. Site's another really important one. I only live in a, um, in a rental place, uh, so there's not a whole lot that I can do which is really going to affect the, uh, the site where I'm going to choose to put my chicken coop. Um, but I did level it and I did put down proper sleepers which will keep the, the, the coop itself nice and level. Uh, you want a, a location which is not that far away from the house because you don't want to be walking out in the rain. Uh, it needs to have some lighting to it. So uh, if you need to go out at night time to investigate noises or predators, uh, you're not going to get sort of um, tripping over stuff. And you also want to look for a place that's, um, that you can keep an eye on the chickens really. So that should sort of indicate your, your site and definitely worth putting a bit of consideration in here because if you change your mind um, depending on how much preparation you've done um, you know it, it, it can save you a lot of work yeah. uh, alrighty so chicken diet uh, this is a really important one if you can get your chickens to eat the, uh, the, the natural foods they're going to have uh, much healthier, much more uh, bright those yellow eggs, those deep yellow eggs and nice bright yolks as well so definitely worth, uh, worth considering and some of the, 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 um, the foods that I tend to grow for chickens include things like kale and there's various types of kale that's super easy to grow you just need to keep the uh, caterpillars off it uh, rocket, bok choy, spinach fantastic silver beet. Uh, also want to think about plants like perinthium and wormwood because then uh, and lavender as well because they're all uh, natural um, insecticidal type plants and they'll help uh, keep the, uh, the insects away uh, and also um, nastrium as well is another really really good plant to sort of grow. You can buy these packets from hardware stores or online they cost you like a dollar two dollars for a packet of seeds and you can grow them in your garden um, doesn't take a whole lot of work or effort and being able to provide your chickens with a whole lot more than just grass is really good because they're going to get all those extra nutrients that they need it's not just the diet you're getting from uh, from from chicken pellets on the subject of chicken pellets see if you can get uh, a farm shop or a decent size uh, pet store um, it's worth knowing where these places are and getting your food in bulk it's so much cheaper than going through a supermarket Oh, so nesting boxes, a lot of people say nesting boxes usually you need like two, uh, two, sorry, one nesting box for every three or four chickens. I don't necessarily agree with this. Uh, my experience is that um, chickens will basically share a nesting box and it doesn't matter how many nesting boxes you've got, you may end up with like 20 eggs in one. Um, you know, five in one box, ten in another box and eight in another box. And then you've got a whole bunch of boxes which are empty, so go figure. And it'll be a different box every week, you know. Um, the chickens are really finkly about that. I just tend to have one bigger box which my chickens will be sharing. Uh, construction materials. This is really, really important. Okay, so what I've tended to find, and, uh, and my dad warned me about this last year, is um, if you make a chicken coop out of wood, and it's going to attract stuff like lice, mites, fleas, um, some of those other sort of nasties, ticks, that kind of stuff, uh, really worth knowing about. So go with a material which is not going to do that, so metal or PVC, absolutely guarantee you, you're going to eliminate those problems and that way you don't need to think about it. Uh, ventilation, so ventilation is another really important one. So uh, obviously in warmer weather, um, if you've got a coop which is um, getting a bit messy and a bit untidy, uh, all that bacteria and stuff like that is going to create some foul odours so uh, don't want that you need a bit of ventilation that will allow the draft to go through and keep your chickens nice and cool obviously Australia does have a winter technically but um, it's not that cold really and it's it's always worth having that bit of ventilation and you can always put a, a heat lamp into you with your chickens if you need to over winter if you're in somewhere like Stanthorpe or something or Applethorpe where it does get very very cold um, latches and hinges Okay, so if you're making your own coop, you want to use bigger latches and hinges, some good quality ones, because they're going to last. You don't want to try and use these little cheapy ones and save yourself a couple of dollars, because it really isn't a saving in the long run. And you'll find these uh, the smaller ones just become a bit fiddly and a bit 
annoying and stuff over time. Um, your chickens are going to need a dust bath somewhere. They're going to, they just do that. Um, so you need to allow that to happen, whether it's inside the coop or if you're going to allow them to wander around for a couple of hours in the afternoon, then um, just accept that they're going to be uh, scratching around. That's just part of what they are. That's just part of their natural behaviours and uh, they need somewhere to, um, to have a bit of a dust bath. Uh, so cleaning the coop, you need to understand that uh, you're going to need to keep your coop clean, just like having any other animal like uh, dogs and cats or any other type of bird. And um, so your coop needs to be kept clean. Uh, another really good reason for going with something like metal or PVC because um, it's just so easy to wash it down, job done, hardly takes any time at all. Uh, on the other hand, if you're going to use something like um, pine shavings or wood shavings, you can always compost those and it becomes very, very, very good compost because it's been mixed in with uh, chicken wee and poo. Disposal of waste. So this is another really important one to think about. So uh, when you are going to dispose of waste, whether that's through the bin system or through, um, uh, through your uh, compost or that kind of stuff, um, you, these are things you just sort of need to have in the back of your mind. So when it comes to doing it, you're not scratching around thinking, uh, how am I going to do this one? Do you get a pre-built kit or go with a DIY one? My favourite is always to go with a DIY one because I like to build stuff, but uh, you might prefer a kit for your version. Uh, you're going to need someone, I've already mentioned this, you're going to need someone or, or a way of caring for your chickens while you're away. If you're only going away for over well, like one or two nights or maybe three nights, it's really not too big a deal if you've got the water supply and food supply in the coop. And we're going to go through that in another video. Um, a bit further down the line. However, you do need to have this um, very much in your mind as to how you're going to feed and, and water your chicks while you're away. Or are you going to get someone in, you know, from the neighbouring suburbs or from the school or something to, uh, to help you out? Uh, your current needs versus your future needs. There's not much point just getting a tiny chicken coop, uh, you know, if you're a younger couple and then suddenly you've got kids and you're thinking, wow, well, you know, really could do with a bigger one. Um, my advice, if you can, is to get a bigger coop, um, the bigger one that you can afford and, and look after and build, uh, or a coop type uh, design that allows you to expand it. So something to think about when you're doing your DIY kind of stuff, or uh, bear in mind when you're going down to the shops. Uh, and if you are going to have, um, if you are going to buy your food uh, for the chickens in bulk, then you need to think, how am I going to store it? Obviously, larger quantities of food left lying around for the chickens uh, is going to attract vermin. So you don't really want that. You don't want, um, you know, pigeons and chick. Um, you don't really want pigeons and magpies and that kind of stuff just pecking around outside. And you don't want them spilling the food on the ground, which is then going to attract rats and, and mice. You want to be able to keep it in a fairly secure, ideally a plastic sort of tub or something, a fairly big one. So worth thinking about getting those uh, little wheelie bins, the 60 litre ones you can get from Bunnings, uh, and they only cost like 10 or $12 each. Definitely worth, uh, worth looking at. So I know we've gone through a whole bunch of different um, ideas and different consideration points in this video but it's definitely worth going through them and that way when you make your decisions and when you plan out your coop and you plan your run and you plan on where am I going to get my chickens from that kind of stuff then um, you've, uh, you've already covered a lot of those bases off so thank you for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Well thanks for watching if you've enjoyed this video please press the like button. If you have any comments suggestions or questions! Please feel free to share this video with Twitter, Facebook or LinkedIn. Please leave a comment below. We're looking forward to seeing you in our next video. Until then, keep safe.